Number four then from the specimen paper for the new hire. Paper two. Logs question. Part A. Express this in this form, the form of log base 4 of x plus k for two marks. Well, the obvious thing is if I just want the x and that 2's going somewhere, there's a law of logs you can use there. When you add logarithms, then they produce a single logarithm of the product. So you could split that apart into log base 4 of 2 plus log base 4 of x. Now I just need to rearrange that. So y equals log base 4 of x plus log base 4 of 2, but log base 4 of 2 is a half. Let's put that down. Since log base 4 of 2 says, remember it's an operator, that operates in the number 2 and tells you which power of the base is involved in producing this. What power of 4 gives 2 is power of half. Now it did say stating the value of k, so maybe I should finish off by saying so k equals a half. Now part b, hence or otherwise describe the relationship between the graphs of log base 4 of 2x and log base 4 of just x. Well here's the standard graph for a logarithm. Coming up crossing the x-axis at 1. This is log base 4, I'll say. So you could have this. y equals log base 4 of 2x. Since it equals this, because it said hence or otherwise, so using the hence part, equals log base 4 of x plus a half. So the interpretation is so that the graph equals the graph shifted up by a half. So, if that was to move up a half, half a unit, it would end up looking like this. But you might say, it's just for the one mark, so that would do. Otherwise, the otherwise would be this. Log 4 of 2x is an alteration of the graph of log 4 of x, where the 2x represents a compression by a factor of 2. That's a compressed by a factor of 2. So you could say the graph of y equals that is the graph of y equals log 4 of x compressed by a factor of 2. So either that or that, they say how can that be? There, how can shifting it up be the same as squashing it? Well, it's just a feature of the exponentials and their inverses, the logs. Special thing about the exponential is the gradient on an exponential graph, on the e-graph, the value of the gradient is the same as the y-coordinate. And the gradient, of course, gives you its slope, the way it curves. So in this graph here, when it's been shifted up a half, actually all these distances have come in. In fact, that's in the next part of the question. If that's been compressed by a factor of 2, then that should have come back to a half. So each of these distances, as you take them horizontally, should come back to a half of what they were originally, simply by shifting up a half. It's just a special feature of the E's and the logs graphs. Part C. Determine the coordinates of the point where the graph of y equals log 4 of 2x intersects the x-axis. So here's that new graph, the graph of y equals log base 4 of 2x, which you can either consider has been compressed by a factor of 2, well that begs the question, that means that must go to a half, or has been lifted up by a half. So it says, where does it cut the x-axis? Well, it'll cut the x-axis when y is 0. So it just depends which form I use for this. So if log 4 of 2x is 0, solve the equation for x. First, remove that function. Log base 4, inverse, 4 to the power. 4 to the power 0 is 1. So x will be 1 divided by the 2, x is a half. Or you could have used the altered form. 
log base 4 of x plus a half was the other form of this. What happens when that equals 0? Well, that means log base 4 of x will equal negative a half. So x will be inverse of log base 4, 4 to the power negative a half. What's 4 to the power negative a half? Well, the negative power means 1 over root 2, square root of 4 is 2, same answer, x is a half. Lastly, sketch and annotate the graph of y equals the inverse function of x, where f of x is log base 4 of 2. Now, it's just difficult. When it says annotate, it wants you to put some points down. Is it sufficient just to move this point? Because there's one other point you knew. You got this point. You probably could have got that point just by thinking it had been compressed by a half. But you also knew the point that you used to cut at 0 here got shifted up a half. So you also know that that's the point 1 along a half up. But the inverse function simply means if you feed it the answers, it'll give you back the numbers you started with. If you feed it y, it'll give you x. Just like taking this picture and switching the y-axis, which was the answers, into the horizontal one, the x-axis, which are the input numbers. So that's the way the graph should look. In other words, it's been reflected in the line y equals x. So it'll look like this. And the two points will be reflections, of course, this way and that. If that was a half along, that will be a half up. If that was one along, a half up, that will be one up, a half along. So a half along, one up. The only other thing might be is, would it be sufficient to do that? Maybe I should put the name there, y equals the inverse function. Would it be sufficient to do that? Or should I really put the full coordinates in? and call that a half zero, and call that zero a half. Best do that just to be safe.